What's going on guys? National Master James Cantor III here and today we're looking at a Grandmaster game in the Kings Indian Defense that I played against the GM on chess.com. We won the game. Let's get right into it guys. The Grandmaster is actually Morius Manalache. Grandmaster Morius Manalache. Hopefully we're saying that correctly. Let's look at it. Here we go. So he plays d4. I go knight f6. Knight f3, g6, kid, foe life. So we always play in Kings Indian Defense. Knight B to D2. This one's a weird one, honestly. This one's like not even covered in like a lot of my studies. So honestly, I sat here for maybe like 20 seconds and was like, should I play D6 anyway, knowing that he's going to play E4? And I was like, I don't know. Really, I think the best move objectively is just D5 to stop E4. That's usually what you do in these kind of lines, especially even like the Joe Baba Londons. You play D5. So I played D5 here, knowing that this is going to be a different kind of King's Indian because D6 is not on the board. D6 allows you to get E5 and C5 in a lot in these KID positions, and now it's, it's just completely different. So after uh, G3, I played Bishop to G7. And then after Bishop G7, Bishop G2, Castles, Castles, and then I play C5, which is just a move to, to make. Um, it's very aggressive. You actually just want to attack the center, and he did take it. Now I don't have stuff like Queen A5, and if I immediately attack the pawn, he goes like Knight B3 and defends it. And he took this quite fast as well. But I did understand that when you give up a pawn like this, you're going for the center. So I played knight to c6. And then after a rook to b1, when he's trying to play b4, I played e5. Now, objectively, honestly, guys, if you turn on the engine here, look at the position, right? I'm down a pawn, but it's completely like equal. Not even uh, about half a pawn. And then it fluctuates a little bit, you see. Yeah, so not even half a pawn here. So actually giving up that pawn was correct. Now, actually, uh, b4 and then e4 happens. So I knew something was good for me because I had this dark square diagonal. All right here. I wanted to get this knight to c3, of course, but it's very hard to do so. It's going to be, I'm about to get my knight to b5 or like a4, which is almost virtually impossible. I was trying to get something like this going. Excuse me, but that was uh, hard to do. So he played knight e1. This position, let's see what the engine likes. Bishop f5 and the xuc, they like black. Not, not by much, but you know, now it's equal. But bishop f5. Bishop f5 is a weird move, I guess. Well, actually, it is. it does work. But that's what I played here. I played bishop e5, even though it's weird, because I just want to play b4. That was my intention. So I played bishop f5. He followed up with a3, just defending this pawn. I was figuring b5 was going to happen, but b5 makes kind of both of these pawns a little weak. So let's see what he did. He played a3. I did follow up with d4 here. And you see the engine doesn't even consider d4. I think they said this was a mistake in a way. They wanted a5. And then after a5, let's actually see what happens on b5. Then it says knight to e5. Knight e5, bishop b2, queen e7. This was the engine line. But I can't actually take this and like, you know, how do you follow up with here? You got to be accurate. This is definitely engine play, but they do like black. Now, I didn't play a5. I actually played d4, which, of course, you see it changes immediately. Um, but as a human here, this just looks really good to have two pawns so far up like this. And if b5, then knight e5. He plays knight to c4. And now from here, I play knight to d5. Let's see what the engine likes. They like b6, not a move to me. Knight to d6. Oh, actually, sorry, that's uh, for white. Knight e8, stopping knight d6. And I did worry about this knight coming into d6 because it's hitting f5, it's hitting b7. He can come back to defend it. So I was like, man, did I get in trouble here? That's what I was thinking. Like, dang, did I mess this up? This knight's coming in here. It's going to be strong. But as you see, the engine just says it's equal. I actually play knight to d5, and then it changes a little bit. Let's turn the engine off here. But knight to c3 was my intention. Of course, bishop b2 so that he can take it. And then from here, I play e3, which I think was just not the best at all uh, compared to what the engine likes. You see it's already losing, but uh, it's like plus three. But of course, you've seen many positions like this. Even watching Grandmaster games, you see the engine fluctuate a lot. So it's a lot. Of, a lot. You, have to, um, you have to be very accurate, and you got to understand what's going on, even in the midst of all the confusion and complexity of this um, position here. It's very, very complex to say the least. So I'll put my, I'll play the e3 actually. I want to kind of just break this up, make some trouble, see what happens, honestly. If pawn takes, I think I was going to play knight takes e3 because I can't take with the pawn. But I played e3. So if pawn takes, knight takes, I was considering just having the pawn here and just playing aggressively. Bishop's on here, maybe play a5 later. And after e3, I realized, yeah, I just don't like this position as much, but I didn't really have a lot of moves to uh, choose from actually. So e3, he played f4 immediately. Which was cool, so I'm like, cool, now I got this nice little pawn center. But then knight d6 is annoying because now the bishop is actually hitting the knight, and um, I don't, I'm not, it's not like, it's not protected anymore. I can't do anything about it. So after f4, I play bishop e6 to come back to defend this knight, and also do like maybe knight takes f4 to hit this loose piece. He didn't play knight to c6, d6, he actually played b5, 
which I saw this afterwards because D4 is hanging. He's getting rid of the defender here. Of course, he's a st very strong GM, so you have to know that he's going to play the strongest moves. B5 and the knight to A5. So I played here immediately because I knew that, yeah, I'm going to lose a pawn, probably another one. But he has a lot of weaknesses. Like, these pawns are very easy to attack. This knight's kind of weird here. But he's going to eventually move it, which makes this loose too. So he took. I took back, and then he takes the pawn, absolutely. From this position, I think they were saying rook d8 anyway, or knight to c3. Now, currently, I'm down two pawns, guys. I think I'm down two pawns, right? Three, six, three. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm down two pawns, but you see it's like not like plus three or plus five. It's really like, you know, oh, he's only up a pawn and a half, which is not enough still. So it's a lot of play here to say the least. Rook A to D8 is what I did play just to keep some pressure here. And if Bishop takes, which he did do, now Knight C3 is jumping in there. Uh, but then he checked me and back up and I still have discoveries. So what he did was take this so he could take another pawn, guys. Currently, check this out. Three, four, five. Versus three, six, seven, eight. I'm down three pawns versus a strong grandmaster here, but I did not give up. And I know that if you create counterplay, if you create counterplay just like you should in the Kings Indian defense, you should be okay. Now, here, look at this, guys. I'm down three pawns, but the engine evaluates it as plus 1.6 because of the activity of the pieces. So, and I can win some of these pawns back. So, what happened is he, I play a6 immediately because if he takes it, which he does. Well, now I got two pawns kind of threatened here. Definitely this one. Definitely this one. And what he did was, okay, you know, he realized this knight's garbage. Absolute garbo. So he put it on knight d3. Then I took on a3. We can, now it's one of my pawns back. He played rook a1. I play here because if he takes this one, now I could take this, but he was anticipating that. And now, now you're losing. You have to look at everything. Everything. So I actually put my bishop on c8. The engine liked bishop h3 much better. But bishop c8, because I knew that was coming, and I wanted to eventually put my bishop on this diagonal. That's why I'm on bishop c8. Then I took it. Now I'm not down so much anymore. Still down two pawns, but uh, it's it's fighting. I have a nice bishop. So he played rook to c1. I played queen a2. Very uh, fishy position, to say the least. c6. Looks like white's about to crush here, but not the case. Rook to d to d8. I just back this up so I can put the rook here to take another pawn, and I have counterplay. Yeah, this is trying to queen, but my bishop and rooks cover it right now. And my queen can come back, so I have to be extremely careful. Engine evaluates it as plus three here after king f2, which is a very interesting move. He didn't actually play that until much later, I think. But I played, uh, he played uh, rook b2, backed it up. I played queen d5. Bishop h3 is absolutely uh, the intention. King f2, I should have played bishop h3. And this was my first choice, but I just thought he would just go here. But I guess the engine liked that much better. But rook d to e8. So I want to move him out of the way. He played queen c5, trying to trade. If I trade, it's basically over. So I put my queen here on e4 to play bishop h3, also eyeing e2 as well. If queen steps off, maybe even queen e3 check too. So rook to c4, I play queen h1. And I thought after he played rook c4, I was like, yes, now I got to move. Queen h1, now I'm here on a back rank. I'm in the house, big fella. What's up? What's for dinner, right? Bishop h3, and here we go with the check. And all kind of stuff is happening. I felt really good in this position. Engine likes it as well, as you see. Now they favor black. Even being down two pawns. So he thought for a while. He played e4. And I was like, oh, this got to be a wrap and a half, big fella. Get the man off the board, right? So queen takes h2. King here. I take another pawn. And now we're even with his king looking crazy in the middle of the street. So um, now with that being said, uh, he went king to d2. Best move here is, uh, I think, rook d8 anyway. Oh, bishop a6 now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop a6 now. And this was nice. This was a nice line. If bishop a6, I was like, what about rook d4? And it snaps. Whoa. Hold up. All kind of stuff about to happen here. Hit this man in his face. King d2, rook d8. I'm pinning it. I'm pinning it. He plays rook d4. I get out the way. Because I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just about to move. I don't really want to trade because I can't follow up with rook d8. And trades will help him a little bit more, especially with this pass pawn being so far um, from here. And we also were getting into time trouble here. This is a 3-0 game. I think we were uh, both maybe under a minute here, maybe close, something like that. So we, we were moving a little bit faster. Rook B to E8, I mean Rook B8. And after Rook B8, I was like, well, he can't take. And if he does take, it's going to take a while for him to push and queen. It's going to take some time. And I knew I had some time, so I was like, well, let me just play H5. And just try to get this pawn a little bit closer. H5, Queen G5, stuff getting crazy here. I'm like, man, I'm not trying to trade at all. So I played Queen H2 check, King C3, right? Then after King C3, I played Rook E6. The engine really liked this move because I'm hitting this pawn with check. And then my queen can come around and there's mating threats. So he played Rook C4. He defended it. 
Instead of bishop a6 and then him taking, that's not good for me. I just play h4 because if I can get this pawn a little bit closer, he's going to have to focus on it. I'm queening as well. Then he plays f5 and we live. And I was like, oh, that's I forgot about that move. But then I forgot about my move. Just take the rook. The rook's hanging, big fella. Trade him. Takes, bishop takes. Now we're hitting your rook. Now you're in trouble on the double. He played c7 and then queen a8 was, was a nice move for me. The engine liked it too. I'm just putting some checks on the board somewhere. I want to be mobile to be able to check him. If rook moves off, I can even take on e4. c8 is covered by the bishop and the rook. Rook to c5. Snap. There we go. Rook e5. Queen c6 check was actually not a blunder, but you know, when you look at analysis and they're like, oh, blunder, or like, that wasn't the best move. I, I should have played here, but of course, hey guys, we were low on time here. We were getting very low on time. Queen c4 was the best move, follow up with queen takes c7, and I'm just completely winning now. So, queen c6, rook c5, I play queen back to b7. And here it got kind of wild. We were both in time trouble here, so I just started checking here. And at this point, uh, as you see, black's winning after queen a2. Let's see how it, how the engine changes here. Next move is rook to c8. Um, I did not. I actually just moved the queen back because I know I was low on time, and I know he was low on time. So I kind of just moved back just to regroup. He went queen e7. He's not actually threatening anything, guys. This bishop and rook and the queen here covered the square so nicely. Queen a3 check. King out of the way, and best move is king g7. That's scary. I'm not trying to play no king g7 there, uh, but maybe so. Queen a2 check. I played that. King to c3 again, and then it says king g7 once again. You also have queen a1, queen a8. I played queen a1. He went king c2. Then I played queen a8 again, and then king c3. Now, more time on the clock. This would be a different kind of game. I didn't repeat moves because I think he was flagging here. And this is what ended up happening after king c2. I played queen a6 just to sit here and kind of trick him a little bit, see what he does. But here, actually, he flagged. So he flagged here. But, you know, a win is a win, okay? If I flag Hikaru Nakamura and I only have a king in the pawn and he got all 16 of his pieces, guess what? I won that game. I won that game, and I'm going to take it forever. But at the same time here, guys, I did win this game, and this wasn't like a, a swindle in a way. I was just winning here. If you have more time on the clock, this would be uh, easier to actually try to convert here. There is some some uh, some technique involved. His king's kind of naked here. And uh, I have some checks, and I got to find the right maneuvers. And I can't. I have to be careful because, you know, especially knight f4 at the right moment could be dangerous, maybe even knight d4. This is still in the air. So you got to be careful here. But I ended up flagging him here. And, you know, the biggest key thing about this game, actually, guys, was just playing for counterplay. If you're a King's Indian defense player, you have to play for counterplay, even being down two, three pawns. Guys, I was down three pawns against the GM. And we still ended up coming back and winning the game based off the counterplay. You never, ever stop punching and swinging. Um, when you're playing the Kings Indian defense guys, so that's one of the biggest factors here I just played and just played and looked for counterplay looked for as much counterplay as possible I knew that this was kind of going to be weak, especially with the knight on e1 He's eventually going to move it which is going to make this weak. So, you know, that's kind of what happened here I got a lot of counterplay and was able to uh, convert it at the end here because he didn't have enough time But I did get some pawns back and this bishop versus knight I knew that this was always going to be a problem for him eventually so that's what we went for. And you want to avoid trades, especially when you're down. The rule is trade when you're up, not when you're down. So, you know, I ended up winning this game, guys. But this is very informative to show you guys how to play Kings Indian defenses, even against some of the strongest. And what you should always be shooting for, always make sure you have the right mindset. No matter who you're playing, I'm going to play aggressive chess in the Kings Indian defense because that's what it's for. That's why we play the Kings Indian defense, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I'm National Master James Canty III. Hope it was informative for you. Put some likes. Put some uh, some shares, share this video, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next video.